Prior to installation of a permarock system, the condition and suitability of the substrate must be considered. A survey should identify any enabling works that need to be carried out before the system can be installed. This will include, but not be limited to, identification of external fixtures and fittings such as satellite dishes, rainwater and foul waste pipes, overflows, BT cables, light fittings, signage, etc., gas electricity meter boxes. Some external fixtures and fittings will require removal and replacement on completion of the works. Treated timber patrices, the same thickness as the insulation system, can be fixed to the wall at locations where external fixtures and fittings are to be attached after the works have been completed. When rainwater pipes are removed, provision for temporary discharge of rainwater away from the face of the wall must be provided for during the course of the works. The survey will also identify flues and overflow pipes which will require extending before the system can be installed. Any works associated with gas fittings, including balanced flue outlets, must be undertaken by a suitably qualified gas safe engineer. Works to BT cables must only be carried out after consultation with BT, who will advise on the most appropriate methodology and will be able to provide details of BT-approved contractors who can undertake such works. If the walls are already rendered, the soundness and integrity of the existing render should also be checked by hammer testing. Loose or otherwise defective render should be carefully hacked off back to a sound solid substrate. Areas of mould, algae and the like should be treated with permarock moss and mould remover following the instructions on the container. Where the existing render has been removed, permarock dubbing out compound is applied to bring the surface flush with the remaining sound render. Once the dubbing out compound has dried, the walls are ready to receive installation of the system. Installation of the system usually commences at the base of the wall, immediately above DPC level. Starter track profiles are installed using permarock profile fixings inserted at 300 mm centers with additional fixings no more than 50 mm from each end. A spirit level is used to ensure that the starter track is installed to level. Packing shims are to be used at each fixing point where necessary to ensure that the tracks are installed straight and to overcome irregularities in the wall surface. Internal, external and irregular angles are to be neatly formed by trimming the starter tracks using tin snips. Adjacent sections of starter track are connected together using plastic H connectors. The plastic drip edge bead is attached to the leading edge upstand of the starter track. The drip edge bead is installed so that it laps across the joints by at least 200 mm. Gaps between the back plate of the starter track and the wall should be sealed using Permarock PU foam or Permarock sealing tape to prevent excessive air movement behind the system, which can otherwise reduce the effectiveness of the insulation. Vertical edges to the system can be formed by fixing full depth stop beads to the wall surface. Before fixing, a continuous bead of permarock silicon sealant is applied to the back plate of the full system stop bead. When the bead is placed against the wall, the sealant spreads out to form a watertight seal. In addition, the beads are mechanically fixed using permarock profile fixings at 300 mm centers and with additional fixings no more than 50 mm from each end. A spirit level is used to ensure that the stop beads are installed vertically. Joints between adjacent sections are formed using the special connectors, which are sealed into place on each side of the joint using Permarock silicon sealant. Permarock offers a number of different insulation types each with individual and varying benefits to suit individual project requirements. 
All standard insulation boards are supplied pre-cut to 1200 mm by 600 mm and in thicknesses to suit the specific project requirements. Prior to insulation of the insulation board, the specified permarock adhesive is applied onto the back face of the board. For boards applied onto a concrete or masonry substrate, the adhesive is applied as a continuous ribbon around the back of the board, with additional bands across the back of the board. This arrangement is important to support the board on the wall surface and to reduce air movement behind the board which can reduce the thermal performance of the system. The thickness of the adhesive can be adjusted to overcome unevenness in the substrate. Sufficient adhesive is required so that after the boards are pressed onto the wall, the boards have at least 40% contact area with the wall surface. The insulation boards are fixed horizontally, commencing at the starter track. The first board is pressed onto the wall surface and floated into place so that the board sits tight up to the upstand of the starter track with the adhesive providing a good bond to the wall. Continue applying the first row of insulation boards with each board tightly butted up to its neighbours. Avoid getting adhesive between the boards. The second and subsequent rows of boards are applied with vertical joints offset from the previous row by 50% of the board length. Where a 50% overlap cannot be maintained, for example, where part boards are used, then the minimum overlap is 200 mm. Board joints should be interlocked at all internal and external corners. If the existing window sills have insufficient projection, then it is recommended that an oversill is fixed over the existing window sill. The oversill should be installed so that it does not impede drainage of the window frame. Before the insulation is applied at window and door frames, APU beads and sealing tapes are fixed to the frame and sill respectively to form a weathertight, flexible seal. The insulation slabs must be cut into an L-shape at all corners of openings within the system. The insulation boards are offered into place and sealed against the abutting surfaces with permarock sealing tape, ensuring that the tape is under full compression, flush with the face of the insulation board. This process is repeated until the whole house is boarded with all insulation boards tightly butted together. In addition to adhesive bonding, the insulation boards are mechanically fixed. Ensuring there is a depth gauge attached to the drill, a hole is then drilled through the insulation board and substrate to the specified diameter and depth of hole as detailed in the fixing pull-out test report. The insulation anchor is inserted into the hole and pushed into place until the washer head is tight onto the surface of the insulation board. The centre pin is driven home using the appropriate tool to secure the fixing into the substrate, ensuring not to overdrive the pin into the insulation. All insulation fixings must be to the specification given by Permarock in accordance with the requirements of the site survey. Where support fixings are required, impact resistant blocks such as treated timber patrices are installed onto the substrate. All narrow gaps between insulation boards are filled with the appropriate filler material. For Permarock EPS, PIR and phenolic insulation systems, the gaps are filled using PU foam insulation, with the foam inserted into the back of the gap so that it expands and fills the void to the full thickness of the insulation. With mineral fibre insulation systems, where non-combustibility is a key requirement, gaps are filled with slivers of permarock mineral fibre insulation. This process is of great importance to ensure that heat does not escape through gaps between insulation boards. Corner beads are required at all external corners, including corners at structural openings. For example, 
at the heads and jams of window and door openings. The beads are bedded into continuous ribbons of permarog bedding mortar applied to both sides and to the full length of the corner. Corner beads are butted together and carefully aligned to ensure that a straight corner edge is achieved. A layer of permarock bedding mortar is then applied onto the insulation layer using a stainless steel trowel or by machine application. The bedding mortar is spread uniformly and whilst it is still in a wet or plastic state, pre-cut strips of permarock reinforcing mesh are laid into the surface. Sheets of reinforcing mesh are lapped by 100 mm at all junctions and are taken down to the bottom of the drip edge bead at the starter track. The mesh is lightly troweled into the surface so that it is flat and free from creases or wrinkles. The mesh must overlap the integral reinforcing mesh of the corner beads and of the window sealing strips at the heads and jams of windows etc. Additional strips of permarock reinforcing mesh, 500 mm long by 250 mm wide, are applied diagonally, tight up to the corner of all windows, doorways and other structural openings. After the bedding mortar is hardened sufficiently, surplus mesh is cut off at the base of the system, leaving a neat edge. When the bedding mortar has dried and hardened, a second thin layer of permarock bedding mortar is applied. This second layer is allowed to take up sufficiently so that it can be sponge floated or smoothed with a spatula to achieve a flat uniform surface, free from trowel marks. After full drying and hardening, the completed reinforcement layer is ready to receive the decorative finish. When the reinforcement layer has dried, a full coat of Permarock K&R primer is applied using a roller or brush. This priming coat should be tinted to the same colour as the decorative finish material. Permarock K&R primer is allowed to dry fully. The surface is now ready to receive the final decorative finish coat of Permarock K finish or Permarock R finish. Permarock K finish is supplied ready mixed in plastic buckets or containers. The material is stirred up using a clean paddle type mixer. K finish is then applied onto the wall surface with a stainless steel trowel to a uniform thickness and consistency. The material is applied in a continuous operation and always working to a wet edge. Immediately after application, the material is textured using a flat plastic texturing float, always working in the same direction and with the same technique to ensure consistency of finish. Permarock offers a range of over 1300 colour options for use on our through coloured renders. All spills and splashes should be removed so that a clean site remains. The property is now complete and all previously removed fixtures can be returned, with a final inspection to then take place to ensure that all decorative finishes are continuous and unbroken, and that all weather seals are in place and intact. Permarock offers a wide range of decorative finishes which can be used in addition to, or as a whole house decorative option to suit the specifier requirements. These include traditional brick slips and brick render systems, spa dashing aggregates, as well as metallic effect renders, stone chip coatings and scraped mineral renders. Permarock can offer a near limitless range of design options for clients and building designers.